The Checkpoint is presented by GM Pharma, the first international multinational pharmaceutical company in Georgia. GM Pharma, to serve those who need it most. Let me now focus your attention on a specific business. It is not in Georgia, but in Moldova. Moldova Agro in Bank. MAIB is the leading bank in Moldova. One year ago, its supervisory board and the National Bank of Moldova approved Georgi Shagidze as the bank's new CEO. Georgi has more than 25 years of banking experience, most recently as the chief financial officer and chief operating officer of TBC Bank in Georgia. During his 10-year tenure, TBC increased its asset base more than eightfold, emerging as the largest bank in Georgia. In 2014, TBC launched an IP on the London Stock Exchange, LSC, attracting foreign institutional and retail investors. Two years later, the listing was upgraded to the premium segment of LSC. TBC shares are included in the uh, FTSE uh, 20, um, 250 index with a current market capitalization of around USD 1 billion. Georgi Sakadze sat down with Georgi Shagidze for a conversation on doing banking in Moldova and more. Georgi, many thanks for your time. Always happy to host you in our Fort Georgia office. So many thanks for being with us. Thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me. So tell me, how do you do in this, uh, I don't know how to call it, it's uh, more than uncertainty what is happening around, but it's been a while after our last interview. How is Moldova and uh, Moldova economic doing so far, uh, especially uh, after 24th of February, uh, which is crucially important uh, for us to know, uh, taking into consideration uh, Moldova's geographical location and economic ties, especially with Russia Federation, uh, which usually uses energy tools against uh, unfriendly countries. Yes, indeed. Uh, it's an important question. I think if we start from the perspective of the long-term performance of the economy and the country's vision to become a member of the European Union, yes. I think this crisis even created certain opportunities well, uh, given the uh, member uh, candidacy status for uh, Moldova. And quite, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank, you, thank you very much. And I think uh, the integration is going on and it's quite uh, strong support from European uh, Union and from the country's leadership assistance to uh, speed up the integration process. So this is clearly uh, clearly a positive uh, uh, positive uh, if we speak about the the the, the war when it started of yeah. course uh, uh, first uh, two three months the situation was uh, quite challenging uh, people uh, were expecting russians to come uh, to Pridnistrovi, which is the um, which is the Do you mean that invasion was expected uh, it was expected because the i mean it was not very apparent but i think they, there was but a there were some was emotions a, yeah, in this there was a perception perception, yeah. perception and there was certain uh, tv channels in russia that basically showed uh, even the map of uh, of the of the region and that's why the people started to react and we had the uh, pressure on deposits but i think the this banking sector was uh, very strong, is very strong, was very liquid, well capitalized, and I think we went through this uh, quite uh, um, uh, difficult proce uh, process but quite easily. What this, I mean, the first quarter, let me say so, after 24th of February, similar uh, to uh, what you definitely remember in Georgia uh, by 2008 when Russia invaded Georgia, and this war lasted like five days, that period. Uh, what the financial system or pressure on commercial banks, similar to what has happened in 2008, Georgia? There was a strong pressure on uh, deposits, similar to what happened in Georgia. And in fact, there was a problem with cash, and we had to bring the cash with the, uh, from uh, Europe uh, with, the, with the charter flights and so on. And that was quite challenging because the sky was kind of closed because of the invasion and, um, and, and uh, uh, into Ukraine and so on. So that uh, the first two or three months were quite challenging. Uh, the sector had very strong liquidity, which 
which basically uh, was used wisely and then we opened the branches and then we didn't restrict any withdrawals from deposits or any transfers and in second months or the third months the situation started to recover and people started to feel more comfortable with the banking sector and then the deposits started to to recover so that was the the first first phase. impact first yeah, yeah first phase tell me uh, how is in general uh, Although we are an economic doing, I mean, we all know that uh, the biggest advantage what this country has is one around one million, let me say so, citizens, uh, which in reality have dual citizenship. I mean, European and uh, Moldovian as a candidate already uh, to European Union. Uh, was Moldovian economy sustainable enough to meet all these challenges? And uh, how in general uh, the economy is growing because it's also a very important part of the EU agenda which uh, Moldovian government and whole society is following. Well, I would say it's on the right track, clearly, and um, has a very strong points. I mean, the public debt is okay. quite low. The currency rate has been uh, very stable. The actual integration on the ground, integration with the European Union is, is happening and has been happening for many years. 70% of export goes to EU and 60 plus uh, percent export comes from EU. Again, 1 million people plus uh, having uh, European Union passport. This is big point for the Indeed. economy. Indeed. Um, I go and meet our corporate customers. They manufacture goods with the tax already uh, attached there for the European consumer. Then there is two, three hours um, uh, distant from, I mean, it's a border with uh, Europe. So Europe. this is uh, this is clearly a big, uh, uh, big plus. Um. The integration is uh, strongly supported by the leadership uh, and uh, and uh, they are doing excellent job from the perspective of uh, you know being there with Europe and European leaders coming to, mm -hmm. to, to, to Moldova. So this is clearly clearly big plus. Georgi, I'm not uh, so much familiar in details about uh, Moldova's uh, dependence on Russia economy and how uh, how much these ties are um, are presented in figures and statistics uh, besides energy dependence uh, which was the first year by the way 2022 when prime minister uh, deputy prime minister i'm sorry uh, moldova he officially announced that country is not dependent exclusively on russian energy sources anymore are there any other important or crucial ties with Russian economy, which uh, really need to be revised, or it's already in process of revision? Uh, well, I think few points may be important. Uh, this crisis also revealed this opportunity, and uh, I think it was in November when Moldova started to import okay. electricity from Romania. There is a, a pipeline, pipeline that uh, you can uh, import gas as well, so that clearly showed the uh, made the diversification uh, possible, and this is a big plus uh, as well. We went through our, uh, let's say, long book um, when uh, the war started, and what we found out is that about only about 10% of our customers had the exposure to uh, uh, to Russia, and only about 10% of those 10% had the exposure more than 20%. Now, this is kind of the long formula, but then uh, it just suggests that the exposure had been quite limited, limited. even before, before the war. By the way, there is a good parallel um, uh, I think it was in 2006 when the wine, uh, uh, the, when the Russians have, uh, when the Russians wine embargo, uh, you remember wine embargo, embargo, embargo to Georgia. Embargo to Georgia. So the same happened. Agriculture in, goods and uh, yeah, wine the same well. happened uh, in Moldova as well. And uh, now I think uh, 80 percent plus uh, Moldovan uh, wine goes to goes to EU, which is uh, which is clearly a very positive uh, outcome of this. You mentioned about bank portfolio in regards of Russia. Taking into consideration, you represent as CEO of the biggest Moldovian bank. Uh, tell us about the results of your bank uh, for 2022. Of course, of course. We, we started uh, 
quite a large or significant or huge transformation. I think we are somewhere in the middle, but then this transformation, first of all, ensures that we put the customer at the center of everything we do. And I know many companies are saying this, but it clearly requires lots of transformation in the mindset, in the processes, in the routines. And uh, there are so many things we are doing. We start, uh, we did the brand refreshment, so not, uh, mm. not rebranding. Not re not re uh, not yeah, not, uh, brand refreshment. You're to, colorful. Yeah, it's colorful, more digital, more modern. We we changed the uh, uh, customer relationship model in all our branches. We are changing the design of the branches with the new colors that are open and uh, so on. We are somewhere in the middle of this uh, change. Uh, we are doing the, most importantly, this is cultural transformation, mm. right? Corporate culture Corporate transformation. Culture. And we go and see many things how ING did it. So, mm. for example, about one month ago, about 60 of us went to see how ING went from traditional bank to become more agile institution. The 60 of us are going Stanford executive uh, education courses, sure. which is designed for oh. my transformation. And we are very proud and excited to go through this uh, as well. So this is big cultural transformation. The second one, is the transformation in digital. And okay. uh, we did uh, so many initiatives this year. Um, uh, Google Pay, Apple Pay, tap to phone, wallet, when you pay the utility payments. We just launched the, well, just, I mean, one month ago, we launched a, a full a digital only card, uh, full. And then uh, we will soon launch the face ID so that you basically uh, confirm your uh, payment. Identification through, uh, through, through the through face. The, through the pay, through the, through the uh, through the face so there are many things in digital and on top of those digital initiatives we already launched uh, three uh, so-called uh, marketplaces or ecosystems with automobiles with um, housing and with agricultural uh, products. So outdoor uh, real estate uh, and, uh, agriculture. and agriculture. So basically these are the uh, these are uh, the initiatives that we launched. Uh, what about these. the figures and uh, how portfolio is growing. Uh, I'm really interested uh, how you guys uh, keep up your position being number one uh, Moldovian market. Indeed, so uh, all this transformation needs to happen in parallel of uh, good financial performance, otherwise it would be, you know. Uh, we are 37% uh, of market in terms of the loans and number two bank is about 20%, so the gap, is, uh, so the gap uh, between the top and uh, number two player is increasing. Last year, we grew our market share in SME banking by four percentage point plus, in retail banking by between one and two percentage uh, point. And uh, in digital uh, transactions, uh, we grew our digital uh, users by about 70 percent, uh, quarter three 2021, quarter three 2022. So this uh, growth have been uh, there, quite impressive number. Uh, uh, on, in parallel of uh, strong portfolio quality, we call it uh, coverage ratio just to ensure that we have enough no. reserves and then we have even increased the coverage ratio. So this is, um, uh, this is important. And from the perspective of return on equity, quarter three has been 21.2% and quarter four we haven't yet published, but I don't see many reasons why it should be materially different. Yeah, absolutely. Taking into consideration traditional port of flow, which is quite active everywhere around the world. Georgi, now tell me about your plans for 2023, taking into consideration the statement you have made. Well, it's not a statement, it's been uh, your choice, the decision of the bank. Uh, when you choose special financial institutions, investment banks and others, uh, it's a group of uh, very important players on the global market, uh, who will advise you and lead you uh, to the open market uh, of the initial public offering, which is IPO, and uh, you guys plan to make it happen in 2023. Tell me about it. Yeah, this is, this is very important and one of the most important initiatives. One thing I must say, though, 
the transformation that uh, I spoke about, it's important with or without IPO. So I think it's the, the target of this transformation is to, yes. Yes, it's to strengthen the strategic position, financial performance, and so on. But then, uh, yes, uh, we, don't, uh, we are targeting to explore IPO in 2023, subject to market conditions and uh, the, how the, 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 the geopolitical situation right. will develop in the, in the region. Uh, we think that there is a good chance to do the IPO in 2023. Three already in 2023. Now, I think when we speak about IPO, it's very important to say it has a much bigger effect on the economy and on the uh, business climate in the country than uh, than uh, bank the, 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 the bank. It's well, I mean, it has the uh, sure the, both the, impact, yeah, yeah both impact. But I think when the largest bank does the uh, <laughs> listing, it acts as the gateway to bring new investors to uh, to position the country well. So we did the Moldovan Capital Market Day on London Stock Exchange one year ago. About two three months ago, we did. Moldovan Capital Market Day or Moldova Romanian Capital Bridges, that was the name uh, uh, in uh, with Bukharest Stock Exchange, which was opened by the Prime Minister of Romania and Prime Minister of uh, of Moldova. So there is a strong interest, and by the way, when we speak with our um, potential investors in the financial centers mm -hmm. of the world, there is a strong interest to. Uh, to to invest in Moldova, to invest in the banking uh, of uh, sector, and to invest in Maib. So this is this is clearly big uh, impact to the to the uh, country. Did I get you correctly in regards of uh, targeting uh, the IPO? It's going to be happening in Bucharest Stock Exchange, or it's different location? No, it will be it will be in Bucharest, Bucharest, Bucharest Stock Exchange. They're growing. They, yeah, they are growing. They have good uh, local demand. Uh, there is a. Um, there are many uh, quite uh, already it's about sophisticated. Forty billion capitalization. Am I right? Uh, uh, yes, forty billion capitalization plus uh, plus all the international uh, usual suspects or investors who yeah. would invest uh, in frontier markets. They are happy to invest in uh, in uh, Maib through Bukharest Stock Exchange. So this is important. So good luck to Moldova, and uh, I be in regards of EU access and uh, all this um, difficult agenda we've got to go through and good luck uh, to you and your team with uh, transformation process and IPO as well. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much Georg, Thank for you. being with us. Thank you. Thank you. The Checkpoint is presented by GM Pharma, the first international multinational pharmaceutical company in Georgia. GM Pharma, to serve those who need it most.